I've said it once and I will say it a million times over until I am dead and placed underground in a very gentle manner with everybody looking over my lifeless body, nobody in this world has it easier than Kirby fans. Hey, how you doing? If you're new here, let me bring you up to speed and get you all caught up with the rest of the class. <clears throat> Kirby gets treated the best out of any Nintendo franchise out there, and it's not even close, I'm sorry. Sure, Mario gets a few remakes that set the world on fire, Zelda gets one of the biggest worlds gaming has ever seen, Pokemon is out there joining the AAA gaming roster by releasing in an incredibly buggy state and not fixing it, but consider this. We can finally play Tilt and Tumble on a console officially with an actual controller. Oh, holy sh**. Yo, an amazing mirror is here too? Dude, like open world Kirby action finally with easily accessible online on the Switch. Like, dude, Mario Wonder doesn't even have online co-op, okay? Clearly Nintendo has their priorities in line. They even acknowledge the Super Nintendo version of Star Stacker for the very first time ever in America. Like, that's, that's awesome. Uh, it's been on the Japanese service for well over a year before this, and they didn't even localize it. Uh, it's all still in Japanese, um, but it, it, it's still pre it's still pretty cool. Uh, guys, it's been five minutes since the last Kirby game got announced. I'm getting scared. The mere acknowledgement of Super Nintendo Star Stacker outside of Japan immediately got my mind racing. Like, don't get me wrong, this is still cool and all. It's really nice that more people have access to it than ever before, but like... Ah, oh, man, the fan translation is right there, dude. Is it even worth playing this game's story mode if I can't decipher the sounds of pain coming from Waddle Dee after I beat him? Didn't think so. And they just went ahead and called it Kirby's Star Stacker, the same name as the Game Boy game, as if we as the fans have not been calling it Super Star Stacker for years? The Kirby community will never recover from this. Listen, okay, we gotta take the stories in these Kirby puzzle games seriously. This is the same franchise that brought us Avalanche with the sassiest Kirby of all time. Please don't tread on my roots. It would not be a wise decision. Oh, sh <coughs> Apparently the, uh, the dialogue in this game wasn't everybody's cup of tea because I actually found a ROM hack that rewrites all of the dialogue to sound more Kir Kirby-ish, I guess. Please be careful around my roots. Can't you walk another way? Kirby still basically says f*** you, though. So yes, if you couldn't tell, we are taking another look deep into the world of ROM hacking. And not just that, we're gonna look at some proper fan games as well. Ones that are being developed right now, and ones that are being developed, uh, 20, 20 years ago. We got, we got some old ones in here too, and it's important to go through those because... Man. We are just riding such a damn good Kirby high, man. Like, of course, I am down to celebrate the official stuff until the cows come home. I will do that every day if I have to. But it's hard to deny that with the fan stuff on top of that, dude, us Kirby fans are really eating well. Yeah, like, like the famous, like the famous watermelon gif. Like, really? We're just superimposing a gif into a video now? What is this, 2009? Nah, I'm over this. Now that is more like it. An absolute highlight for me in the ROM hacking scene nowadays is this trend of colorizing a bunch of classic OG Game Boy games. You know how Nintendo did that for Link's Awakening with the DX port on Game Boy Color? So yeah, basically that, but times a hundred for games that never got them. It's all kind of surreal to look at honestly, but this is a working game. You, you could load this in your Game Boy emulator of choice or an analog pocket, whatever you want, and it, it just works. The original Dreamland, the only Kirby game where he was white on the box art, now in more than four colors, that's pretty damn cool. Seeing the latter half of bubbly clouds be a proper starry night sky and all that, man, it's just... It's just so nice looking. It's hard to believe this is the same game and not some big budget project. And that's not all, Pinball Land got the treatment too. With this, all three boards look a whole lot more distinct with unique color palettes and the bosses all feel just a tad more epic as a result. Finally, the joy of spending forever trying to go up the next section of the table only to immediately get shot back down comes in a more vivid appearance than ever before. Oh, how fun. And before anybody goes, oh, but what about the Super Game Boy? That gave these games color. I mean, nah, look at this. This this doesn't really count. Like, yes, it is color, but come on. And besides, in the grand scheme of things, these games are very small in scope. We need to experiment with something a bit more. Kirby's Dreamland 2DX, baby. Dude, this, 
This feels illegal to look at. Unlike the first Dreamland game, this has always been a much fuller adventure. And for this fan project, the artists have left no stone unturned to make sure that if the Game Boy Color is able to produce the color, then damn it, they were gonna use it. On top of that, the original game did feature native Super Game Boy support, which of course added color like the previous games, but in a much more appropriate way, implementing the typical four color palette to match the theme of the world that you're in. And even included a cute little border. I, I always liked that a whole lot. But dude, like, come on, look at this. It's no comparison. Just gaze your eyes upon the level end bonus game. Like, I, I didn't even know this was possible, but quite frankly, I don't care how it was possible. I'm just here loving this. This looks gorgeous. At certain points during this adventure, it even outshines Kirby's Adventure. You know, the game that already had color in it. Looking back again to Link's Awakening DX, it was very clear that when they moved from the Game Boy to the Game Boy Color, they were also able to add new content. And hey, turns out the fans can do the same thing. Look at that, a settings menu. Not a whole lot you can do here, but you can change the status bar color. That's kind of cool and you can even disable the Animal Friends theme songs from interrupting the level music. Like, that's kind of cool. Koo's theme is incredible, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I want to hear the proper soundtrack. I'm sure Block Ball and Star Stacker will get their own DX spotlight at some point, but for the time being, this is what we have, and this is awesome. I love this a whole lot. The me that's been playing this game since I was a child, a very, very wee lad, is loving this. Thank you for everyone who worked on these, because, oh my god. I love the Game Boy as much as the next guy, but it is hard to go back to the classic four shades of gray or green, if the option for full color is right there. Kirby's Adventure for the NES established that this world was always meant to be bright and incredibly vivid, so it is awesome seeing this bit of a slightly different timeline where these games got the official DX treatment as well. It just makes these titles feel a lot more uniform with the native Game Boy Color game, Kirby Tilton. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Kir Kirby, Kirby, mm. Hey guys, you wanna come over and play some Kirby, mm? Got the hot new game, Kirby, mm. You wanna come through and give it a world? It's Kirby, Kirby mm. You know, while it is cool and all that Tilt and Tumble got an official re-release with controller support, it doesn't really change the fact that that game can be kinda rough and annoying at times. Whether you're tilting a Game Boy, a Switch Pro controller, or the whole ass GameCube, that is just the nature of this game. It is. Is, oof, oh boy. But maybe this hack that assigns tilting to the D-pad and jumping to a button is just the thing you need. This tiltless hack has been around for quite a while, but props for going the extra mile and removing the tilt and tumble from the title as well, because now we won't get sued for misinformation. There's no more tilting, there's no more tumbling, there's just... Mm. The motion controls were the core gimmick with this game, and removing it does eliminate a lot of why you would even play this game in the first place, but hey, for speedrun potential, I can see this being a good time. Unless, you know, practicing with the Switch version on a controller prone to motion drifting sounds appealing. Oh, oh boy, I can't wait to do that. And just like that, the fans are responsible for definitive editions of four classic Game Boy Kirby games. Now, don't mind me, I will now continue to play every single level in the ball rolling minigame in Kirby mm, until I pass out from exhaustion. Another popular trend in the world of ROM hacking are randomizers, where you can take any element of the game, levels, items, enemies, whatever you want, and completely jumble them around, and it's pure chaos. These tend to be pretty popular with Zelda and Metroid, Sonic has a few too, but who cares about any of them? It's Kirby's time to shine. He has some randomizers too. Finally, he's the king. You already know, Kirby's the king. Why do I even need to explain it? Kirby's the king. The one that was probably the least exciting was the Superstar Randomizer, which just changed up what abilities you got from the enemies, and that's it. Yeah, not, uh, not thrilling at all, honestly, but it did give me paint on the very first stage, and that was pretty refreshing, playing Superstar and dealing with that feeling of, oh yeah, I forgot about paint, so early on in Spring Breeze, because let's be real, you forgot about paint too. The same can be said for the Nightmare in Dreamland randomizer, but here you can also change Kirby's color, and that's cool. Mostly because it reminded me of just how damn good the sprite work was for this game, because man, Kirby looks fantastic. Oh my god, Meta Knight was Kirby all along, oh my god. Ah, that's great, with this hack you're able to get the light ability more often than ever before. Good, good, good. The adventure randomizer though here, here's where we start cooking. You get, you get it, like cook, like cook Kirby, you get it. You see here, not only do we change Kirby's color as well as randomize the abilities, but the levels get shuffled around too. There's no guarantee where you're going once you enter a door in one of the worlds. Now, once you're in a level, everything remains the same from the source material, but we're getting closer and closer towards peak randomness here. We need to get even more silly. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we got them. If any game in this franchise were to benefit from a randomizer mode, you already knew it was Amazing Mirror because oh my god, this is one of the most unhinged hacks I've ever played in my entire life. The colors, random. The abilities themselves, not random, but a lot of enemy placements are. The music is random too, which is very bizarre when you get to a boss and it's playing a very calming theme that, oh boy, that's weird. And yes, most importantly, the levels are random too. Are you, are you realizing just how crazy that is? Each and every door now brings you to a totally random location in this game's gigantic world with absolutely no rhyme or reason, and it is awesome. You're jumping from world to world in mere seconds and accompanied with that music that doesn't fit the situation at all, it's changing every five seconds, it's wild. You got the occasional enemy that you didn't see coming either, and man, this is... This is crazy. You see all these times when you go into a door and then you can see there's another door that's supposed to lead you back to the area you just came from? Well, now that door brings you to somewhere random as well. It's, it's just total chaos. I spent like 30 minutes just running in circles, doing nothing but maybe getting two treasures, and then I got to my very first boss. It took a half hour. I got plenty of the fast travel switches. I found a shocking amount of those stupid star catching mini games. That's annoying. But for the love of God, I was just I was just begging for a stupid boss fight so I can make some proper progress here. It took forever. Forever. And to think you can randomize a game and play it co-op as well, that is so, so damn cool, this is perfect. The other Kirby randomizers maintain a similar experience as the base games do, but Amazing Mirror, that is not the case here. I am losing my damn mind and loving every second of it. This is, this is fantastic. I, I, I don't know how smooth of an experience it is, I, I, I kind of went crazy 20 minutes into doing nothing, but man, it's still, it's still awesome. Now last time we did this, Kirby's Adventure hacks were starting to show some real potential. Like we had Kirby's Adventure re-stitched, which was pretty exciting, stringing every level together in order without ever returning to the hub world, which does lead to an interesting challenge, only because I turned this into a, uh, how long can I keep the UFO ability from level 1, which I found out, 10 minutes later, was approximately, uh, here-ish? And I didn't take that news very well. And since then, there have been a few more entries to add to the ROM hacking lineup. Like here, we have this brand new difficult hack called Heaven or Hell, which brings your health points to one without any way to increase it, and the same goes for your life count, turning the entire game into a one-hit death adventure with many trips back to the game over screen. It is painful. If you're one of those clowns on the internet that says that Kirby games are just far too easy, Sometimes you're right, but this wouldn't be one of those instances. There's some more level-based potential showing up periodically too. Here we have some levels designed off the ones from Super Mario Bros. Wow, so retro. Here we got Star Rod Scuffle, which is a lot more fleshed out with new graphics for the levels and even for the ability cards, which is pretty sick. And for an extra bit of fan service, Pain Roller was replaced with Addo from Dreamland 3. Love that. I'm grasping at anything I can here because I'm an unsatiable Kirby fan. But all these years later, there is still one dominant king in this field. Kirby's Halloween Adventure. We did talk about this last time, but since that time, there have been multiple updates to it, leading to version 1.4, which is the final patch. Halloween Adventure is complete. A, a, a ROM hack that's actually completed? That's... Wow. Uh, not to belittle any hacker out there that's still working on your projects, like, obviously it's no easy feat. It takes many years to get it where exactly where you want it, but this one's done. It's a full-blown game, and it's done. That's, that's incredible. Once again, us Kirby fans are eating really good, what can I say? Brand new level designs, brand new enemy sprites, brand new level themes, brand new ability cards that all go with this spooky, trick-or-treat style vibe. This is a proper new game built on the original adventure engine. This is clearly the cream of the crop. The aesthetic here is just so unique. It transcends just being a simple batch of levels because I was always wanting to jump into the next stage just to see what it was gonna be this time. I have played adventure dozens and dozens of times in the past and it was so nice to play an entire game where every level caught me by surprise. Dude, even when you start the game all the way in level one, you can go into Kirby's house. You couldn't do that in the official games until Forgotten Land. Like, you can do this now? That's awesome. Ah, oh, and the new ability cards. I just love these so much. The new high jump ability card is Superman. I'm there popping, y'all! Crash is now Bomberman. That's perfect. If you gulp down an enemy with no ability, it goes, I got a rock. But if you got the rock ability, it goes, I got a rock. <laughs> that's, that's, that's genius. Uh, Mike Kirby out here just enjoying a nice stroll. That's that's pure bliss right there. Oh, oh, oh no, oh, oh, oh no. An evil wheel is going after it. Oh God, oh God, he can't get out of the way. He has headphones on, he can't hear us. Oh God, no. Uh, I wanna thank also the hundreds of fans who uh, were so kind to let me know that that is actually a reference. Uh, the whole wheel thing, that is a reference to the 2010 indie French horror movie, Rubber, uh, which is about a tire. 
I uh, didn't didn't know that beforehand, and now I do. So I feel so cultured. I did also find this one NES hack where you can play as Kirby in Mr. Gimmick, and that's really cool. Uh, mostly because I wanted to talk about Mr. Gimmick for a second. All right, now I hear all your cries loud and clear. Pixels. The pixelated Kirby games have been getting the fan hack love for far too long. I am happy to say that polygons are finally getting some love too. Check this out, Kirby 64 Wispy's Trials, a set of brand new levels for the Pink Puff's first pseudo 3D adventure. And it is pretty limited, but this means the future is bright for brand new, fully 3D environments for this classic N64 title. The fact that we can get new levels for this game, that's awesome. I mean, let's be real here, there's, 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 there's not a whole lot to work with, but I'm, I gotta talk about it, because man, it's maybe in 10 years there'll be something good, but right now, this is what we got. I mean, like, also, someone ported Babam Battlefield from Mario 64, like, that's... That, that's ki that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty slim pickings for Kirby 64. Really now, it is all about Return to Dreamland because this is the game that's gotten the quote unquote pretty damn cool treatment, all things considered. I was kind of hopeful that Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot would be in the conversation too, but honestly, the best thing we got right now is simply upping the resolution in an emulator and dreaming about what the game would look like with an eventual console port. That's that's it. I mean, I mean, it looks nice. I, I mean, if this was ever in proper HD, I'm sure it would look gorgeous, but as it is, it, it, it looks really cool. Meanwhile, we go back to Return to Dreamland for the Wii and we got... Oh, you see, that's why I liked Return to Dreamland Deluxe so much. It could have been a simple port of what the Wii game looks like, just upscaled. I mean, that's exactly what they did with Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Why wouldn't I expect them to do that with Kirby as well? But no, the art style swap makes things stand out a lot more than ever before. So when it comes time to thinking about some theoretical console versions of the 3DS games, just the idea of getting something in the vein of Return to Dreamland Deluxe gets me very excited. But man, you know what? Even if you weren't into every single graphical change, there's a mod that released immediately immediately after the game came out that removed said outlines. I'd make fun of the people who were so desperate to remove the character's outlines immediately, but quite frankly, I'm a Paper Mario fan, so I can't be making such outlandish claims. I'm no better. Oh yeah, that was totally a King DDD tree, by the way. Tree DD. I hate this. I, I hate this a lot. I was trying to act like this never happened and move on, but uh... I guess, I guess we'll talk about it. Without a doubt, it is the Return to Dreamland modding scene that is certainly the most uh, unhinged of the group, to put it lightly. Yeah, man, remember when Kirby rode atop a DDD at the end of the adventure when you were going up against Magalore? Of course you do, look, it's right there. Oh yeah, that looks about right. This is Kirby, isn't this the Kirby plush that typically hides in front of people's houses with a knife? Oh. <laughs> oh no. One mod that really stuck out to me is Galactic Crisis, which not only replaces Meta Knight with Galacta Knight, but even implements the proper moveset of that character, which is pretty damn cool. This isn't just Meta Knight with a different skin, nah, you can just cause havoc throughout the entire game as Galacta Knight, that's pretty awesome. This thing's a butterfly, and it's causing chaos, I love it. You can even give Fighter Kirby Jotaro Joestar's hat, giving a whole new meaning to Kirby's bizarre adventure. <laughs> Shout out also to Kirby's Retro Dreamland. This is just a neat idea. A full graphical overhaul that restylizes the game to be more like the canceled GameCube game. The gameplay is exactly the same, like nothing has changed there, but considering how elusive that original beta is, it's pretty refreshing to go through the finished product with this new but old coat of paint. And hell, while I'm at it, someone took this idea a step further with a deluxe mod that had new models based off of the character's original adventure appearances. I love this so much. Uh, sadly, I am no Switch modding pro, so I can only enjoy this image from afar, but it looks it looks nice from afar. I'll give it that. Unlike all the stuff that I already know how to do with the Wii version, where with the click of a few buttons, I can... Uh-oh. Meta Knight got fat. You know, it's, I understand, you know, I've come to accept that there are some people out there who, when the first chance that they get, they, they want to, they want to take their favorite characters and make them really fat, and that's fine. That's your prerogative. Uh, it's also my prerogative to see that, and, uh, want to go get my eyeballs cleansed after this. So, that's, that's in the plans. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up THE RTDL mod to end all RTDL mods, Revenge of Dreamland. On the surface, Revenge is a straight-up hard mode of the original game, but if you're familiar with the original, you quickly begin to notice dozens of tiny little changes here and there that really keep you on your toes in the best possible way. Level designs, slightly different. The hat designs for abilities, slightly different as well. Hell, on top of that, like in the older games, abilities like fire or beam even fully change your color. That's so cool. You then begin to notice that 
that certain enemies are moving a lot faster too. If an enemy has a projectile, their distance is much longer than before. Dude, I'm out here dying to the first gigant edge mini boss. Like, what do you mean? The biggest surprise of all to me was that the energy spheres are now in different locations. Some of them. While plenty of them are in the original spots, so coupled with the harder difficulty, it's just harder to get to them in general, but a lot of them are placed meticulously behind new strings of obstacles and enemies that are genuinely challenging. It really could have been so easy to just make every single enemy kill you in one hit and then level designs are introducing spikes everywhere and then boom, that's the hard mode, but no. There was actually a lot of thought and a surprising amount of tweaking done to make for a genuinely great mod. Well, until I thought, you know, Wispy Woods was dead and, you know, just as easy as he always was, but then, like, he changed color out of nowhere and his attack strategy changed, like, excuse me, uh, this is possible? I'm mad. I'm actually mad. Okay, I'm not, I'm not that mad. I'm more so upset. I'm just upset. Play this mod with friends if you never want to see those friends again. That is an Ant Dude guarantee. I hope that when it comes to looking towards the future of Kirby modding, that Forgotten Land gets a bright future, since it is the first big 3D adventure everyone was hoping for after all. I mean, somebody got the game running in 60 FPS almost immediately, which is pretty cool. Not like the game needed it, the native 30 FPS works perfectly fine for this game, but it is nice to see. I'm more of a uh, playable Awoofy guy, personally. Yeah, it's a lot of skins. We have a lot of skins to work with here. Minecraft Kirby, Diamond Sword Kirby, Always Surprised Kirby, Grammy Award winner Meta Knight, because yes, that is a real thing, and I'm so proud of him. Moving Kirby into SpongeBob's Pineapple Under the Sea, why the hell not? It is just skins at the moment, but man, am I excited to see what idiocy comes in the future. All I'm saying is if you were thinking the original game was missing Shadow the Hedgehog as the true final boss, then damn it, the modding community has you covered. At the end of the day, the exciting takeaway from all of this is while the hacking and modding scenes are still not as robust as Mario or Sonic, there's a lot more happening in a wider range of games now than we had a few years back when it was mostly just adventure hacks and, I, I don't know, Superstar had one, one thing, I guess? That, that was about it. I mean, in the last video, I had to bring up mods of Sonic games just to fill up the video time, so we're in a much better spot now. But hey, let's continue looking at some fan projects. Sometimes, if you want the really good stuff, we gotta look beyond simply taking a ROM and modifying it to our will. The world of full-on fan games has been growing consistently for years now. It's bigger than it ever has been before, and that's really exciting. So there are definitely some projects that I want to highlight here, as well as take some time to appreciate where we are now, uh, by looking back at where we started 20 plus years ago, because once again, man. Part of me just really wanted an excuse to finally check out Kirby and the Eternal Paradise. From seeing online bits and pieces of what was being built here, I can tell that this fan game was gonna be a bit more on the special side. You see, last time on this adventure, I played Kirby's Dreamland Advance, a reimagining of Kirby's debut adventure in the style of an authentic GBA game. This, on the other hand, takes that great authentic style and adds so much more control options to your moveset. This is merely a demo at the moment, but immediately the potential is crazy. The current Abilities on offer have brand new moves to work with that really flow well into each other. You can swap between two abilities on the fly now. You got this sick slide long jump combo. This is a level of complexity I feel like Nintendo would never actually do themselves in an official Kirby game, but this is all still done in a way that feels like a proper Kirby game. And it's just a shame there isn't more to play with in this demo, man, because this is going to be good when there's more to dive into. The reality though is that even though I'm so excited to spotlight this game for the first time ever, it does seem like current development has been ceased. It seems like the developer was going through some stuff and hey, it's more important to handle that than making a fan game, but just know this sir, your contribution to the Kirby fan game field has not gone unnoticed. Similarly, we have Gamble Galaxy Stories, another one with plenty of potential. Simply put, it's another super competent Kirby fan project where who knows how long it'll take before we get there, but any final product that comes of this will be fantastic. And with the source code being publicly available too, hopefully that's sooner rather than later. You consider what these projects are looking like in the current era, and we look back to 2010's Invaders from the Dark, it's clear to see the jumps that some of these fans are making, while also all coming together to agree that, uh, okay, yeah, that GBA Kirby sprite, really really was peak, wasn't it? But you know what? That being said, Kirby's Dream Land Plus really caught my eye too. You don't often see fan games of popular franchises trying to emulate the Game Boy style of all options, but hey, that's what we got. Great new sprite work, ape remixes of music spanning the entire series, new abilities with the option to play as GUI. Once again, not a final product, but it is cool to see different fans approaching fan games in different ways. Sort of like, uh... Oh yeah, this one, this one's about to be different. Kirby Battle Blitz is a fighting game. 
And uh, it's it's a really good one too. What the hell? This is the most anime bullshit I have ever seen from Kirby, and Kirby has an anime. I feel like this has no right to be as fun as it is, but once I started playing, I was just nailing combos left and right, and characters were flying all over the place. This is... this is awesome. So we got this wide cast of Kirby original characters, and they all have pretty different movesets that all work with the same idea of building up your meter, juggling your opponents, fairly typical fighting game stuff. But it all just feels really satisfying, considering this isn't just a Kirby fighters thing of, oh, every character is just a different Kirby ability, and instead each character is their own unique thing and they have an actual personality as told by the game's story mode, it immediately became a much grander blowout blast giving each character a test run and seeing which one of them felt the best. One of the Kirbys has a damn Keyblade. Like, of course it's gonna be insane. The Sonic community did the same thing with Sonic Smackdown. Like, these franchises that decided to have these weird, offshoot, unconventional fighting games as an official product actually have a fan project that is a more traditional fighting game, and they're both sick. Give me a friggin' Star Tropics fighting game next. I, I don't know. And dude, there's a level creator too? Dream Crafter, Mario Maker, but for Kirby. Are you sold yet? Like everything else here, we're still far away from any sort of final product, but man, what is here already works surprisingly well. It's an 8-bit Kirby game with the obvious NES style, but we got rootin' tootin' whip Kirby here. I love him. It is already possible to go online and download some other creator's levels, but I was all about giving the actual designer a shot, and it was surprisingly straightforward. Placing tiles, enemies, doors, adding background layers, all with, of course, being able to test what you made immediately it's really fun. The controls don't feel exactly like a Kirby game. There's definitely some tweaking to be done there, but what's currently here, it's awesome. I know I keep jumping around from franchise to franchise here, but man, Mega Man Maker does the same thing for that franchise, and it's just so cool knowing that the main companies aren't going to do any of this stuff anytime soon, so leave it to the fans to pick up the slack and celebrate these classic video game styles with seemingly endless content. What more could you ask for? I mean, the Whip Kirby is cool and all, and like, I, I do like Rootin' Tootin' Kirby, but I think it's about time we buckle down and just finally, finally give Kirby a gun. Watch out, everybody. Kirby's f***ing pissed. And this time, he's done being nice. He is locked and loaded and ready to destroy everything that comes in his way, not just in Dreamland, but in any Nintendo world he dares step into. You see, this whole time I thought Link was pretty stupid, constantly going up against Ganon with the sword. If he had a rocket launcher like Kirby had here, it would go much smoother. What is this, Death thinks that he can step to Kirby with a gun? Yeah, right. That's a good way for Death to go from being a title to being a description. What's beautiful about Kirby's Rampage is that this game was put online relatively recently, but it looks like it was developed during the Stone Age. All things considered, the fan game scene certainly isn't all that vast, but we do have a lot of promising demos. As well as, once again, Kirby's Rampage, which probably has an ending, but I I don't know, the game the game kind of crashed, so I, I couldn't I couldn't see the end and I wasn't gonna do it again, but I I trust that there's an ending. I don't know. The same goes for the ROM hacks too. There is a lot of promise being developed that hopefully, once again, I keep saying this, in 5-10 years, we get a lot more cool stuff. It feels so nice to actually have a lot of things to play rather than struggling for table scraps. I just want more Kirby food, man. We gotta continue this whole Kirby fans are eating good thing as long as we possibly can. But now, it is finally time to take a trip back through the Wayback Machine. Way back before wikis and AI learning were dominating the internet world, I was taking many trips to this little fan site called Kirby's Rainbow Resort, where one of its main selling points was, hey, this one section here for fan games. It's kind of crazy to think, but I did actually play these games when I was a wee little fetus, and I haven't touched them since, so let's see if they hold up. I mean, I mean, they're not gonna, but let's see anyway. Kirby games. Does this title screen have you excited? I remember looking at this when I was a kid and being like, oh man, more than one game in one game? That, I can't wait to play it. We got uh, a really slow breakout, a shooting game against Nightmare. Uh, oh, okay, that that's it. Maybe, maybe we need more polished single game experiences. That's probably better off. Fighter Kirby Rush. Oh dear god. Dude, honestly, like, the most fun part about this was installing it. Like, this blue to black radiant is a window to the past, man. Send me back to the screensaver maze where it's safe, the original liminal space. I'm home. Minigame Madness has a similar premise to Kirby games, multiple games in one. Let's give it a go! Okay, so we got a basic memory game, that's a classic. And, uh, the other planets are currently inaccessible. Don't you just hate playing games in early access? I don't care whether or not it's been 20 plus years since this demo released. Hopefully we get the full product soon enough. I can't wait for the full game. Next up, Met Arena. Oh man, there he goes. 
He, he's moving all right. All those solid green knights don't stand a chance. I don't, I don't know what they are. They, they didn't explain. It's just, it's just I'm being bombarded by green and the audience is stunned at this wondrous performance. I would be too. And when you're done fighting, you can go on to the next game, Save Kirby, where you play as Meta Knight and he, uh, uh, all right, all right, this this one lost me, I'm not gonna lie. Gourmet Grab, this is kind of a Kirby thing, right? Like Gourmet Race from Superstar? Maybe this one can be kind of similar. Uh, that, that, that ain't Kirby. Yeah, that ain't Kirby, I'm sorry. Gotta eat all the good food, like cake and chicken. Don't eat the yucky food, like green beans and pumpkins. Gosh, vegetables are so icky, aren't they? Ugh, parents will just never understand. But forget the first game, man. I'm all in for Gourmet Grab 2, where you can not only play as Kirby and even Meta Knight now, but also... Sa 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 Nick, there he is, and it's <laughs> oh, oh god, god, it's so it's so bad. Here we got bump in battle, where you just sort of pray that you knock the enemy into the hole. That's that's it. <laughs> that's it. Kirby asteroids, not asteroids, asteroids. Which you know what? I'll give him credit. This is actually the arcade game asteroids. This one is totally accurate, just with Kirby. Credit where it's due. Good for you. Candy Cane Frenzy. Just keep walking in a straight line towards the endless void, gathering as many candy canes as you can and avoiding the trees. And be careful because if you touch the trees, uh, Kirby, Kirby dies, I think. I don't know, my game froze here. The beat slaps though. Kirby on Ze Zebus? Yo, the, the Metroid world? Okay, let's go. Oh yeah, man, this is, this is the Metroid I remember all too well. But now we got Kirby in this? Oh, that's, that's awesome. You, you know, you look at this and then you look at Dread. They're the same picture. Special shout out to PW Rush, a mini game with Lolo instead of Kirby. That's awesome. I mean, not, not the game. The game is bad. I'm just happy that someone back in 2004 said Lolo's name out loud. Really, no, it's just a less good version of Kirby Starshot, a contender for the slowest shooter of all time. But you know what? I, I swear to God, this is gonna be weird to say, but there there is some ambition here because you can actually get a handful of copy abilities that will affect your shots. That is shockingly ambitious, especially when you compare it to Candy Cane Frenzy. Boss fights are shockingly tough. There's like no rhyme or reason. They're just shooting off like cra oh, oh, back to the title screen. Good. Oh god. Okay, maybe maybe Kirby Valiance is the one. You know, we have an actual story to consider here. I can invest myself into the plot. In an age of darkness in Dreamland, there was little hope to anyone. The new enemies, the babu, uh, babu, 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 <laughs> the baboombas. <laughs> all right, all right, you bastard baboombas. You'll never get into the fort if I have anything to say about it. That's probably why they're so angry. <laughs> who, who called them bab baboombas? It's like a secret cut cousin of the Goomba family from Mario. You know, they didn't really put up that strong of an offense, but I am getting kind of tired, so I'm just gonna let them have the fort. It's it's fine. I'll, ju I'll just take a nap here. That It'll be fine. All right, there's a story. Everything's gone bad. Everything you can expect. Wow, the Baboombas are evil. Uh, let's see here. If you can kill more Baboomba in this game, you can unlock... Sorry. Un Unlco different endings. Gaming has never been better than this. All right, time to answer a very important question here. Am I gonna take the time out of my day? Am I gonna go for the completionist run and succumb to all these urges to do such thing, defeating 70 plus Baboomba to see the final ending of this game? Uh, you already know the answer to that. It's no, you can see the video's ending soon, so I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I, they're, they're Baboomba? I'm not, I'm not gonna kill 70 plus Baboomba, all right? That's silly. Let the Baboomba run the world for all I care. First your jaw circle, and then you just you just fill it in with the color black, I guess, and uh, there you go, it's a baboomba. Congratulations.